Hey, and welcome to another Axis Online video. And our hope is that this one, week 36, is actually our last one for a good while. If you didn't catch last week's uh, video or the announcement that I made in this past Sunday's uh, church service, we, we plan to actually resume our in-person access meetings this upcoming Wednesday. On Wednesday, February 10th, from 6 p.m. to 8, 10 p.m., we will be meet, meeting here in this building at Word of Life for youth group. We're also going to be following the same guidelines that we did in the fall before we had to put things back on pause for a bit. That means that when you enter into the building, you are going to need to follow those social distancing stickers through our registration process and into the gym where I'm actually sitting right now. Uh, and then when we head into worship, the chairs are still going to be spaced out a bit and we're not going to have live music at least for a little while. We'll be watching that on the video screen. And there's also going to be hand sanitizer in a lot of different places that we are going to, uh, again, going to be encouraging all of you to use. But probably more importantly, you are going to need to wear a face mask inside the Word of Life building. You, you don't gonna have to wear one of these when you're eating, and if we do an outdoor game, you don't need one there. And when we're seated at those seats that are socially distanced for our worship time, you obviously have the option to, to take this mask off if you'd like to, but when we're moving around or when you're in your small group or in other places where socially distancing is not really easy or possible, a mask, it needs to be worn. And I know that doing so is not very fun. I know that, that I've got uh, this beard, which uh, my mask, it constantly tickles and it, and it makes my face itch. It's pretty uncomfortable. But, but remember that we are uh, doing this not for our comfort, but out of love for other people around us. And despite all of our, our feelings on the effectiveness of masks, it's still more loving to wear one than to not wear one. And, and don't forget, too, that we're called to obey our governing authorities in Scripture like Romans 13, 1 through 7. So wearing a mask actually is also an exercise of our faith as Christians. But that's enough of that know that we are so, so excited to see you all. Sarah and myself and all of your small group leaders have been anxiously preparing to see you. And, and we know that, that while the Lord has been with us directing our study in this online format, it is way easier to feel his presence when you are surrounded by friends who are also committed to following him. So next Wednesday is the start of our in-person axis, and we hope to see you all then. We are starting a new series today. This is the, the first lesson in a series that we are calling Free People. And I'm going to be teaching this one virtually, but we are actually going to pick back up with things next week in person. But before we jump into that, let me just ask all of you this. What is one rule that you just hate following? What is one rule that you just hate following? Maybe you've got to do chores at home. Maybe your mom makes you scrub the toilets every week, or your dad makes you chop wood for the wood-burning stove, and, and you just hate doing that. Or maybe it has to do with waking up at a certain time to go to school. When I was in high school, I had to wake up at 6.20 a.m. in order to take a shower and to eat breakfast and to catch a ride to my first hour class. But, but I hated waking up so early, and I just so desperately wanted to sleep in. Or maybe 
there are rules currently in place because of social distancing restrictions that you just hate to follow. Maybe it's masks. Maybe it's how you have to now sit in the cafeteria. Maybe you hate that it's mandatory to have your face camera on when you're in your virtual class. There are all kinds of rules that we are expected to follow, especially as teenagers. And not all of us like to do so. I remember that one of the more frustrating things about being a teenager was that I often felt kind of stuck between being treated like a child and being respected as an adult. And I was given some freedoms, but not as much as I wanted to back then. And I think that this is the same for most teenagers even today. Right now, you might think that you're ready for more freedoms, but there are still a lot of rules that you have to follow. And there are a lot of adults telling you what to do. What do we do about that? What do we do about the rules that we don't want to follow? What do we do about our frustrations and all these feelings that we might feel when, when we don't feel as free as we'd like to be? And, and if we looked at the pages of the Bible for help with this, is the Bible just going to tell us to obey end of discussion? But that's a complicating factor, right? The Bible. Because let me ask you this. When you think of the Bible, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Or when you think of God, what's the first character trait of his that you think about? For a lot of people, the Bible is just this big list of rules that just spans for miles and miles. And these rules, they, they don't feel important or, or relevant. And for a lot of people, God is just some old man in the sky who makes us follow outdated rules to take away all of our fun and all of our freedom. What gives? I'd like to introduce you all to a person, an author. Uh, one of the people who wrote one of the books that we find in the New Testament portion of our Bibles. His name is James, and he's also got a pretty famous brother named Jesus. But, but after Jesus rose from the dead, you might remember that he challenged his followers to go and to share the good news of his gospel. Well, James dove headfirst into spreading that good news, and James eventually even became a leader of the church in Jerusalem, a faith community that was primarily made up of Jewish people who began to follow Jesus as Messiah because of the spread of the gospel of the good news. You, you also should know that James grew up within that Jewish culture that had lots and lots of rules and lots and lots of religious regulations and restrictions. Their Bible was the Old Testament. And for the people in James's culture, they all tried very, very hard to follow all of those rules within the Old Testament. For example, they made sure not to kill each other or kill other people like one of the, the Ten Commandments tells them to do. But there are just hundreds and hundreds of other rules in there too, like don't wear clothes made out of different kinds of fabrics. Or if you find an ox on the side of the road, stop what you're doing and take it back to its owner right away. Or don't eat pork or don't eat shellfish as they're ceremonially unclean. There's all kinds of rules in the Old Testament. And maybe it seems weird that God would give all of these rules to Israel back in their day. But they all had a purpose. Some of these rules kept the Jewish people safe and it kept them healthy. Some others set them apart for, uh, from the nations around them so that they could better stick out in their witness to the Lord. Others were there with the attempt to teach the Israelite people how to live peaceably with their neighbors and connect with God on a, on a deeper level. And even others provided them a short-term solution to their sin problem. All of these rules served a purpose back then. However, and once Jesus showed up, the, the Jewish people who followed him began to kind of realize that things were beginning to change a bit. 
The new family that Jesus was forming wasn't meant to be characterized by boundary and by difference. Instead, it was going to be a group of people from all nations and in all people, not just of Israel. So that meant that the laws which pertain to making Israel different, like the food laws and the clothing laws and the things like that, those weren't going to apply to the church. But Jesus also told his followers this within a conversation found in Matthew 22 verses 36 through 40. And that says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. I know that what we just talked about was some pretty technical stuff. And it's kind of confusing, but it was also confusing to the people in James's day too. And because of that, he actually wrote a letter to the churches in his area to help explain. Again, this letter is found in the New Testament, and it's easy to pick out too, as it's named James after the guy who wrote it. And in this letter, James spends a lot of time talking to early believers about rule following and what rules they needed to follow and then which ones they didn't have to any longer because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, because Jesus' death paid for their sins. But, but check out a portion of what James wrote in his letter. This is James 1, to 25, and it says this, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Let's break this down a bit. Has anyone ever said to you, stop arguing and do what I say? <laughs> Maybe your, your parent or guardian said that to you when you backtalked them, uh, you know, a time in the past. But, but if you're used to responses like that, what James wrote in 122 through 25 might seem kind of similar to that, right? It, it might seem harsh. But that was not James's intent. And he isn't simply trying to tell those early believers in the Jerusalem churches that he was writing to, to just be quiet and submit to all of those anti-shrimp and multi-fabric clothing laws that were found in the Old Testament. No, James says the word law in those verses, yes, but he doesn't necessarily mean the Old Testament laws that Jewish people once had to strictly follow. He's actually talking about how Jesus reinterpreted those laws. He's talking about that love God and love neighbors thing. And what James is saying is that when we follow that, we're actually supposed to experience freedom. When we try to love God and love our neighbors, we shouldn't feel restricted or, or caged up, but instead we should feel set free. The Jewish people in James's day, they thought that following all of those hundreds of laws in the Old Testament was the only way that they could earn God's love. But Jesus and James tells us that, look, God already loves us. And because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, those who are part of God's new family aren't bound by all of those rules, but two, we're to love God and we're to love our neighbors. The Lord isn't about giving us rules that keep us feeling like prisoners. The rules that God now gives are designed to set us free. So what does that mean? <laughs> what does all of that mean? have to do with us here and now? Well, that's something that we are going to be exploring for the next few weeks in person. 
But let me just kind of say this as a way of, of wrapping this first lesson up. I mentioned earlier that a lot of the rules that we've got to follow now seem sort of restrictive and unfair, right? I, I don't like waking up early. I didn't as a teenager and I, and I still don't. And I don't like cleaning toilets and I, and I especially don't like wearing a mask. But what if we started to think about rules a bit differently than that? Instead of telling our parents or teachers that what they're asking of us is dumb, maybe we should begin to ask ourselves how we can love our parents or teachers better. Maybe cleaning toilets at home saves our mom or dad the time they might need to prepare dinner for the whole family, and, and us doing that type of job without grumbling would bless them. Maybe waking up early in the morning allows everybody's schedules to, to fit better together so that there's a smooth transition for everybody into school or into work. And maybe wearing a mask helps contain the spread of a virus or calms the nerves of those who aren't able to socially distance in a particular moment. That means that the loving thing to do would be to wear a mask in places that we're supposed to. The reality is, there will always be rules that we don't like or don't understand or, or don't agree with. But remember that the right rules can set you free. And according to Jesus, the greatest rule is love.